remember, you do not have the authority here, Jackie Weaver. We all got to know her when Handforth Parish Council's chaotic Zoom meeting went viral. Could she be the next Prime Minister? She's actually going to have a go and see if she can do it. She's part of an, of an unlikely leadership race that's put her up against a former Miss Universe finalist. This is not the Conservative Party leadership race. This is an alternative battle to be Prime Minister in a bid to win Britain's alternative Prime Minister's crown. Yes, the show is called Make Me Prime Minister. It sees 12 contestants try to prove they can handle the pressure of being in number 10 with advice from leaders past and present. Well, former Downing Street Director of Communications Alistair Campbell and Baroness Saeed Avasi are the judges on the show and join us now. This looks brilliant, Baroness Saeed Avasi. Um, tell us all about it and what makes a good leader. Do you see potential in these alternative candidates, people who perhaps could replace Liz Truss? Well, you know, Alistair and I are quite... You're normally quite reluctant about re reality TV. But I think we'd got to the point... And remember, this started under a Boris Johnson leadership. We started filming this. And I think both of us felt that politics had become so much like reality TV that we needed to turn to reality TV to try and find an alternative. And we found some fabulous candidates. These are not people who want to be TV wannabes. These are people who want to be either parliamentarians, activists, have a really big issue that they want to take to the public. And I hope that between us, we managed to demystify how politics is done. That it probably isn't as easy as sometimes people sat at home think it is. If you take something like The Apprentice, it's not really about running a business. It's about a competition to impress Alan Sugar. That, I mean, bigger business person is much more complicated. Or if, if you know, take, take MasterChef, it's not really about running a kitchen. How much can you make this really like being Prime Minister? And well, how much of it is actually, you know, a fight to impress the two of you? Well, the, each episode, not all of them, but most of the episodes end actually end with, with two of the would-be Prime Ministers going head-to-head -head in a debate in front of the public and they vote. Right. So there is a public vote right. week by week. The other thing I'd say that I think is different, I think they wanted to start us off within that sort of Alan Sugar mode, but yeah. we ended up becoming quite close to a lot of the candidates and ended up mentoring them rather than judging them. Right. And I've got to say, I'm not just saying this because I think we now have the worst government we've ever had in my lifetime, with the worst Prime Minister, even worse than Boris Johnson, and the worst Chancellor of our lifetime. I think we get the point. Yeah, quite quasi quasi <laughs> trustonomics. But I honestly, we both agreed this. If Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak had been going through the programme at the time, they would not have made the final. Because there's all sorts of things that we put in place that they would have not have made. For example, integrity. For example, telling the truth. So I actually think when you get to the final in six weeks' time, uh, I think you will see... I really, really hope if the parties have got any sense, they'll watch it and they'll think, yeah. let's get them. And would John Major, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, David Cameron, would any of them yeah. pass the test? Yeah, yeah, they would, they would. And I think what we found in these candidates was a real passion for change. They came with big ideas. They realised how tough politics was, how they needed to cost up their ideas, how they needed to build a team, how they needed to sell it, how they needed to get people to vote for it. But ultimately, they did... And we kept reinforcing this, this sense of character, ethics, values, teamship, the fact that when you're in public life, there comes with that sense of responsibility about how you conduct yourself. Mm. And I think these are really important conversations that we as a nation... They made a lot having, of mistakes, whatever they? your left, yeah, whatever your politics are, left or right, there is a basic set of requirements that we should expect from mm. people. We, we've heard um, Alistair's verdict on Liz Truss, mm -hmm. Baroness Saidavasi. You were chairman of the Conservative Party. What is your verdict on Sir Keir Starmer? Well, one of the things that we argue about a lot during the filming of this, both on screen and off screen, is he keeps telling me how bad my party is, how many mistakes they're making. And, God, of course they're making mistakes. You know, the fact that we had to get rid of Boris Johnson meant that a huge amount of mistakes were made. But I keep saying this to him and to the Labour Party, but you're still not winning. So, clearly, whatever you're saying is not cutting through. The vision of Britain that you're presenting, however awful you may think parts of the Conservative vision are, our vision are, clearly, whatever you're selling, people aren't buying. And, ultimately, the, you can't just reason. sit back well, and wait. Well, hang on, Alison. Let me, let me just finish. Part of the reason... <laughs> well, part of the reason. So, so, so you just finish. interrupted someone <laughs> no, who to... hadn't finished okay. and then said, let me <laughs> yeah. finish. Yeah. Yeah. Why, yeah. Don't, yeah. why don't, yeah. don't we allow Baroness... 
Yes, well, Why don't we allow finish. you, Susanna, to make this about the Labour Party when we want to talk about the TV programme? The point I was going to make... <laughs> the point I was going to make... Literally just is spoke that over the person sitting next to you... Go on, then. I didn't. Did you think I spoke over you? Actually, to be I'll fair, I mean, we, we, we have this banter consistently where, you know, we... Just uh, to you about as vastly, Alistair, you're fired. Fine. <laughs> Can I no, make a point I or not? Go on, go on, no. make a point. Thanks, Ida. I don't think you should concede your ground, Bernard. I mean, look, say... he's in a party that hasn't won an election for over a decade. Oh, you right? feel sorry for Off him. Off you go. OK. Saida, the point, the point <laughs> that Saida was making, these 12 people, with two or three exceptions, would not be going in to represent any of the current parties. They're not necessarily party political. In fact, two or three of them, who I thought were bang up, absolutely Labour, when I talked to them, weren't. Yeah. So these are people who are showing... They're not coming at it from a party political perspective. Yeah, but we have a democracy I know. with parties. So Do we have a broken own... system? Well, I mean, it's certainly the case you can only become Prime Minister if you can persuade your party first. And isn't yeah. part of persuading your party... To what change. you have to do to be Prime Minister? And that's where I think some of them will go. For example, there's, there's, there's one uh, young woman, Kelly, who's basically SNP. If the SNP are watching, they should get her. There's a couple of people, yeah. uh, also women... Uh, Natalie, you thought she was a Tory. I thought she was Labour. I don't think she's either. She might not be, but then I'm thinking, <laughs> Lib Dems, go yeah. for her. What yeah. do you mm. think politics, politicians, cabinet members, shadow cabinet members, if they watch the programme, what would they learn about politics and how to be better as a political leader? You know, Ed, what I really hope politicians learn from this is that they sit back and think, what are the basic characteristics, ethics and values that I should have as somebody who holds public office? Public office comes with responsibility. That means you are judged to a higher standard. And I know this may sound like obvious statements to be making, but we need to return to a position where we don't have issues like corruption in our mm. system, where we don't have question marks about the way in which which politicians are conducting themselves and yeah. whether there are, you know, dodgy dealings going on. We don't have question marks about their values and their ethics, their decency, their commitment to the rule of law. I mean, these are basic things, but these people are not individuals. They hold the office of the Prime Minister, the office of the Chancellor, and too many people have given too many lives and fought too long to make sure that we protect these values sure. that keep our nation yeah, going. Yeah, but the, the, the thing I'd say about the contestants, if I was a politician watching them, I think the most frightening thing from the political perspective, you talked about having Chloe Smith yesterday, West Street and today. When we were going into the to see these guys every day, they weren't talking about this stuff. So these are what people. Stuff? They weren't talking about West even Minster. Boris Johnson, West Streeting. The, 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 le the lesson for the politicians is these people who are passionate about change, they're not listening to you. It's, it's terrifying the disconnect between politics as it's being conducted and where people are, including people who really want to change the world. So I think that what you're seeing from a lot of our politicians today, it's kind of... that They're almost robotic in the way that they project themselves. They're not connecting with people. And what I think you'll see with these people... Look, some of them are terrible, some of them make terrible mistakes, some of them have got no chance. But as you go through the process, you will see, I think, half a dozen people who are really authentic, really care, okay. have got incredible passion about change, and they don't trust our current political system yeah. to deliver it. So the show is on tonight on Channel 4, 9.15. Thank you both very much indeed. You made a reference there to Chloe Smith and West Street, and that's because, just in the, uh, the break coming up to the item, we'd said the government is not doing a broadcast today on our programme, and the reason for that is they say that they don't put anybody up for interview in a week where another party is having a political conference. But let's ask Alistair, in a financial crisis, Mark's under pressure, should the Treasury send a minister out to explain what's going on? The, the Treasury cannot avoid the space that's being created now, mm. exactly. and it's part of their responsibility. And one of the reasons the pound is going to keep tanking and the gilt market is going even crazier is because they see a government that's absent without And how about it. walking from the Treasury to number 10 and not answering any questions if you're the Chancellor Exchequer while you're on camera? Yeah, but to be fair, if he'd got a car, everybody would have kicked off about the fact Go that he'd got into a car. car. Oh, come Go on, if he'd got car. in the car for 100 metres, he would have been criticised for that as well. Yeah. You know, let's not cri criticise for the hey, decisions stop he's defending making. Them. Play the issue, not the man. Yeah. I'm just saying it was a tactical disaster. In the absence of the government this morning, we do have a former Treasury Minister, David Gork. So he'll be in that slot from uh, the Conservative Party. He's a former, he's a former Treasury, Treasury Minister. Minister. 
Yes, I was talking about from Not the right of the political spectrum. What? Right the Labour Party. <laughs> Blue Tory. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you both very much indeed. Um, and all credit to Chloe Smith yesterday, the Working Pension yeah. Secretary, who did appear for the government, she despite didn't... the fact that apparently the principle is we don't put a government minister up she during a Labour Party She conference. was good to.